Hey, the Braves have jumped in front. one nothing over the Marlins here in the top of the second inning. And let's check out our Home Depot tools from the dugout as we celebrate the magical 1995 season. Here is the resume of Braves Hall of Fame skipper Bobby Cox. And that and that last line a special moment for all of us and a special moment tonight. The skippers here. Bobby you look great man. Feel good uh, Chip and that uh, was fun being around the guys again uh, this evening and the ball game. I was down in the tunnel most of the time talking to our old coaches Clarence Jones and Leo Mazzoli <laughs> got a little hot out there but Chipper uh, brought us home OK. Did, did your team win the, the we, match? Yeah we won it. They pissed around uh, Alejandro Pena <laughs> to get the Chipper <laughs> and he bombed one. <laughs> What's new you know not much another, another uh, game winner for Chipper. Yeah uh, yeah you know we just got back from the Hall of Fame with John Smoltz so a couple more years we'll have another brave in there and that that'll be a lot of fun also but. It was a great ceremony. John did a super job as usual and a lot of fun this year. The pressure was off the, the three of us, Glav and Maddox and myself. So we had we were a little bit looser. Is it different being a Hall of Famer a year later now? Uh, a little bit. You know, it didn't really dawn on me that, you know, during the ceremony and everything, it was this year that uh, when we went back, I think it, it was more of an influence that, you know, you made it to the top of the hill here. So we're here tonight in Atlanta all weekend long talking about what's hard to believe 20 years ago the Braves won the World Series against the Cleveland Indians besides the game six victory and that incredible celebration. What do you remember most about the entire 1995 season. Oh I don't know you know it was a shortened season and we won 90 games I think we only played like 140 something like that and we won our division by. Uh, double digits I'm sure of that and I uh, was trying to keep the guys sharp going into the playoffs and you know keeping them major league ready and playoff ready so but uh, you know it was a great season and we played a great team uh, against the Indians they had all the hitters in the world on that team but we had all the pitching so as they say in the old days pitching dominates good hitters and that's what happened Bobby that was the first year of uh, division play too with the wild card team. That's a base hit down the right field line by Cole Gillespie and the Marlins are going to have runners at second. They're going to bring a runner home from third and the throw is going to be late and Miami's tied it up ball trickles away from Przinsky flipped by Fulton to third and Gillespie's in at third and we're tied one apiece. With that added round of the uh, playoffs when you had to play Colorado that year the first time did that give you a little pause for concern where normally you just had to get through one team to get to the World Series. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. It makes a huge difference. And you know one reason one of the reasons we won that series Chipper Jones made a play over the third base back on a ground ball that uh, if he had to make that play we probably wouldn't have been in the World Series but he did and, uh, and we got there but it's always it's tough now to you know the last two years wild card teams have won it so you know it, it's a flip of the coin every once in a while Bobby we're celebrating 95 but we're also celebrating the incredible run of 50 years of baseball in Atlanta if you can take us back in your mindset as the general manager of this organization and the idea of the, the pitching dominated philosophy that you helped instill here was that a difficult thing to convince ownership to do and if so how did you convince them to do it we were a little bit of uh, programming for Ted Turner at the time and we got a couple of players that you know we're characters and Ted like that for programming and and once we got away from that kind of thinking and thinking about putting a winning team on the field it got a lot better and uh, you know a lot of guys were responsible for that mainly Paul Snyder our scouting director and uh, and some of the other guys but uh, you know um, it's been a great run and you know if you talk to anybody in baseball you know the first thing we got to do with this team is we need three good starters at least and we go work on the bullpen a little bit and hopefully we can you know score enough runs to win tight ball games and it was that way for the longest time here believe me throw to first Simmons looked Gillespie back to third who was thinking about heading home on contact he knows about Angleton's arm and that saved a run and keeps the game tied and there's the first out of the inning you see fun to watch oh, a lot man. Chip. I mean, have you seen anybody much better than this? No, in the minor leagues, you know, I was following them a little bit, and the guys would come in, the coaches from there, and the instructors, and said, 
you know, it's showtime every single night. Every night he does something special, and he's done it just about every game that he's played for the Braves. It, he's incredibly good. So Tom Kohler's the hitter, runner at third with one out. Fultonevich with that big arm gets a head strike one. Back to Andrelton real quick. I know Bobby, we all appreciate his physical talents, but one of the things I love about Andrelton is are his instincts and his he's always looking to get an out somewhere when you least expect it. You better not round first base too no. far on a single to left field. The ball's being thrown back in. He'll nail you. He's done it many times. And you know, I of all the shortstops I've seen, and he's right at the top for me. I mean, I've seen some great ones in my day, but uh, he's he's a special kid and he plays hurt, plays hard, and he's got great instincts. Strikeout number three for Mike Fultonevich. Two outs in the top of the order in D. Gordon. I am not suggesting in any way that Mike Fultonevich is going to be on the same career arc that John Smoltz is, but do you see some similarities between the two of them at this? Shall we say unpolished stage in Fulton Evich's career? It's unpolished. It's lack of control right now, as a lot of young hard throwers do, and it takes a year or so to get the bugs out of it. Uh, I saw him this afternoon, said hello to him. I said, you know, throwing strikes is good. Quality strikes are a lot better. And uh, he's got a great arm. If I, I, I love him as a starter for the future, but if all that fails, he's going to be one of the dominant closers in the game. I feel it was a. You know, tough to give up Gaddis in that trade, but we needed some young pitching, and we got it. And there's a lot of it, isn't there? A lot of it. We haven't even seen part of it yet. They're not ready, but uh, you know, some other kids are down there uh, that we'll see up here in probably two or three years. D. Gordon, the speedster, struck out on a face-high fastball his first time up, and he taps one to the mound. Fulte's got it. He throws a strike to first. And that takes care of D. Gordon. Skipper, can you stick around for another half inning? You bet. We want to talk about the Braves' offense. It's a 1-1 game. 